I will continue with the examples with sun studies. First, what has been done in Dhruva, but I will also use examples from other sources. In these examples, I try to mix length scales as well as materials because both of them are of interest to various people. One is that uh, from started from microscopic structure, we are now moving on to mesoscopic structure and then mesoscopic structure in various materials are of interest to various group of researchers and also various industries. Uh, last lecture I discussed with you some examples from micelles forming using surfactant molecules. I will continue a little bit with that. I will also talk about polymers and I will also talk about a very interesting subject known as vortex plus lattice. So in these lectures I will mix up length scales length scales and materials because sun's technique is of interest interest for materials and this lecture I will try to cover a range of materials so that you will get a flavor of what can be done using sun's techniques. I uh, will <coughs> repeat with this figure small angle neutron scattering as I told you earlier with a little derivation that in the low Q range you have Guinea law p to the power minus Q square Rg square by 3 I0 that is intensity so log of intensity versus Q square should be a straight line of course, this depends if it is an Rg square. If it is not, then it can deviate from straight line. But such low Q plots can give me the values of Rg. In the, this is in the Guinea region. And in the Poros region, when you go to slightly larger Q, then the intensity is given by some constants. I will not know divided by q to the power n depending on the fractal dimension of the material that you are using and it is surface structure and here it is q to the power 4 for perfectly perfectly spherical smooth surfaces but it can be other powers of q if you are using fractal materials and I will show you as an example what fractal materials that we get and I have also talked to you about fractals earlier that fractals are materials which have non-integral dimensions instead of 1, 2, 3 like 1 dimensional, 2 dimensional and 3 dimensional object fractal objects can have dimensions between 1 and 2 or 2 and 3 and why? because the way they are embedded in space as I showed you as you reduce the length scales, the number of scales required don't go as a power law. And I took the example as one dimensional fractals and the coastline of India and showed you that as you go to shorter and shorter length scale, your lengths become longer and longer, faster than a power law, an integral power law. Also, small angle scattering in higher angles of the small angle scattering you can get structure from structure of the nano nano size in inhomogeneities that you are studying so interatomic structure will give similar to Bragg peak or more precisely similar to what we saw in liquid and amorphous systems you will get peak that will tell you an average inter inhomogeneity distance and of course in all of these the x-axis is q vector all our structural works are 
q vectors and i must mention at this point before i miss it that in all this structural work we are considering coherent scattering cross section and not incoherent scattering because incoherent scattering cross section does not help me to get g of r or interparticle correlations but incoherent scattering cross section can help in dynamics i'll come to that later but when i'm talking about all these structure works i will be talking about coherent coherent scattering length please remember this and i also showed you that in case of small angle neutron scattering you can make mixtures of d2o which has got 6 point something 10 to the power 10 per centimeter square which is the scattering length density and h2o has minus minus 0.57 into 10 to the power 10 per centimeter square and mixing the two d2o and h2o we can make a contrast with respect to the particle that was studied to our desirable values and we can sort of lighten up different parts of a particle so this gives the broad range of q values and the broad kind of information that we get from this sans values now i have chosen few examples i showed you micellar structures earlier now i will be talking about first about something called gemini surfactants very interesting as this simple sketch shows that micelles were as i talked to earlier micelles were having a head group which can be a cation anion or a neutral head group and a large tail group hydrocarbon hydrocarbon carbon so this large head group is generally positive or negative if it is then they will like to be actually like to face the water whereas the tail group which is making made of hydro hydrocarbon chains they will be hydrophobic and then i discussed with you that in the simplest case they will form a sphere with the heads looking outward and the tails looking inward and micelles are very important component in various chemical industries so made forming of surfactants now i am talking about one step ahead from this kind of single head group surfactants so these were designed by a specialist group at isc bangalore the experiments were done at truva so these are called gemini surfactants which has got two head groups two head groups connected by a chain so this is a micelle my, my, with multiple head groups and multiple tails so in this case <coughs> excuse me there is a spacer layer and there are two head groups now question is the question was asked that how do they combine to form a, a material in the in a in an elect in a in a solvent something like a micelle so and there is a competition and the the, the studies used either a flexible chain so here the flexible chain is the a chain of ch2 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 depending on the that the m is the number of chain length this is flexible because you can bend it this chain can bend and here there is a benzoic ring which is stiff one you cannot bend it so basically this is a flexible this is a flexible head group uh, sorry flexible spacer group this is a rigid spacer group we form micelles using surfactants with two kinds of uh, 
spaces and see the difference in the small angle data. Here you can see that when we have d sigma by d omega, this by 1 by q square fitting for when the space group is 3, when the spacer group has 4 chains, then it is 1 by q, when it has 5 chains, it is 0 slope at the low q. This is because the conformation of the surfactant when it forms micelles is changing because it can bend. So this gives us a lot of flexibility in forming structures by playing with the length of the head group and that is clearly evident from the low Q data. At the same time, when you have a rigid, rigid uh, spacer group, we do have a structure which is vesicular. A vesicle is basically a micelle but forming their bilayers. So there can be bilayers or there can be more layer number of layers. So in the case of bilayers actually it can be like this the head groups that micelle comes here a head group. In the present case because there are multiple head groups so two of them will be there. Let me just be a little more clear about it. So you have bilayer means this is one layer, this is the inner layer. So these will have the micelles stacked up and this is called a vesicle. And here in this vesicle you have two head groups coming. Here also you have two head groups coming and in between you have got back gap where the solvent goes in. This is called a vesicle. And in case of rigid spacer layer we find that it's a vesicular structure. This is the structure which is preferred unlike a flexible ch chain connecting the two. And this vesicle structure is more clear if you see this what I was talking to you about this shown as the part over here that the head groups these are the head groups from the surface layers here and here and in between the tails are in this vesicle and there is an interparticle distance because this is a circle inside circle inside circle so you have got a first layer second layer third layer and you have got a coherent small p so we have multi laminar vesicle where it is one sphere inside another inside another and you can make out the shell shell thickness from this small peak that we see around 0.1 2.5 angstrom inverse in this SANS data. So this is one example. This is a very fine work where the Gemini surfactants were made and their structure in the micelles were studied using small angle neutron scattering. The similar studies are possible if you one is interested in the, the structure of this kind of inhomogeneities in a solution. Uh, then I can talk about multi-headed surfactants. The previous examples were two surfactants connected by a chain, but here a single tail and there are multiple chains, multiple head groups. The tail is like here it is C14H29, so it's a long tail, but you have got now two head groups. So here there are three head groups. So we can make such surfactant molecules where the hydrophobic tail is one hydrophobic tail is one but connect to multiple head groups I am simplifying it for your understanding so there are multiple head groups so I can have one head group I can have two head groups or I can even have three head groups and let us see what we get when we try to form micellar structure with these head groups. So this is a schematic of the structure that it, will, it might form. Of course it is shown in two dimension. In reality it will be in three dimensions. So when you have h equal to 1, the tails are stretched and you can see depending on the tail length that means approximately twice the tail length you have got a circular structure. Actually 
in case of three dimension it will be a spherical structure but when you have h equal to 2 i am showing a micelle with two head groups you can see the two head groups they are repelling each other because the head groups have same charge and they are repelling each other so when they repel each other then this association is difficult to be made because they will try to be away from each other and the tails will have a hydrophobic interaction which will tell them to be close to each other so the head groups try to go away and the tail groups try to come in together and same thing so they start bending the tail start bending so if these two head groups have to be away but the tail is there and there is one more one one head group and uh, two head groups they have one tail there is one more has got tails now these tails they try to come to close to each other so they like to bend and get entangled in the in this place inside the inside the micelle inside the micelle and this entanglement increases as you increase the number of head groups so the coordination number decreases and the entanglement increases because they have to fill up this space not allow any water to come in at the same time the repulsion between the head groups have to be respected and then the data i show you here you see so this is the small angle neutron scattering data so it has got two parts one is the form factor part one is the structure factor part the structure factor is that gives which that which gives us the interparticle distance and the peak comes from there now you can see as the peak is moving out that means the size is becoming smaller so that means with increasing number of head groups the micelle becomes smaller that is one indication because the peak is moving outside outward also <coughs> by fitting this slope we can find out the number of coordination of such surfactants in a micelle <coughs> excuse me under the assumption this is a prolate spheroid we find that for one the coordination number is 244 for two the coordination number is 48 as i mentioned to you earlier and for three the coordination number is 20 and also you can see the a and b values actually this is a semi major axis and b equal to c is the semi minor axis so it's a prolate spheroid b equal to c a so you can see under the assumption that the micelle takes a prolate spheroid shape we find the parameters for the prolate spheroid these are all in angstroms so i want to point it out to you that you see i am dealing with length scales which are much larger than crystallographic length scales but i am able to predict interparticle distance like at the deep in case of atomic liquids and molecular liquids for liquid and amorphous diffraction i am able to find out the interparticle distances from there i can find out the particle size by finding or fitting the models for a prolate spheroid so this is a finding in sans where i can find out the shape of the particles and also their interparticle distance in a sans experiment this was also an example from what we did at dhruva now i will go ahead <coughs> with the example of sorry surfactant and protein interaction now again i just very quickly mention that pq is the structure form factor and sq is the structure factor where you have the dimension d of the fractal dimension so you cannot don't pay too much attention in this expression except that you have a form factor and a structure factor part here the form factor i have derived it earlier for you for a sphere and rp is the radius of duration for a particle and this expression gives me the structure factor as a power of q d where d is the dimension it can be a fractal dimension for the object so these are the two things we must pay attention to <coughs> in this expression so 
I am talking about surfactant induced protein unfolding. Now, proteins, proteins are important for all the fun or most of the functions in our body, and proteins are actually they are made of amino acids. The list is limited, amino acids, amino acids, but with various combination of amino acids, and the proteins they form helixes and beta sheets, beta sheets and helixes, and they fold up. The protein folding is an important aspect of proteins activity. So the protein are made of alpha helixes and beta sheets. So you have parts of the protein which will be like this possibly like this and also there are helixes and sheets and they fold up in its environment whichever environment you are putting them. So depending on the environment protein folding changes and proteins activity also changes because it has lots of charge size. Now in this example the interaction between protein and surfactants has been studied in a solution. So I just give you an example. This is bovine serum albumin is a protein and SDS is a micelle and the interaction between the two and you can see that uh, when we add this SDS to the solution the protein this, this background chain is protein this background chain is protein and there are these small spots where inside which because of the charge on the protein we have this kind of micelles forming. It's a very interesting system interesting biologically and also chemically that the proteins are interacting <coughs> with the micelle that has been formed using SDS surfactants and with the percentage of BSA and SDS we can see that the this the, from this results that the structure of the micelle changes and again in this experiment the protein we call it the necklace and the bead arrangement so as if the protein forms the background the chain of the necklace and these micelles they are forming beads on them on a very very simplistic yeah, modeling and you can see that these experiments with due to and their contrast match so you can see the protein or you can see the micelle formed with the SDS uh, SDS uh, uh, surfactants and by contrast matching the background as which, is a, which is an H2O and D2O mixture and also we can use hydrogenated SDS and deuterated SDS. <coughs> so what we find here that with the SDS concentration it is in millimolar solution millimole you can see that the structure of the micelle changes not too large but they are almost similar but marginally different but we can find out <clears throat> and when this unfolds that means the protein chain unfolds along with the micelles then there is a drastic drop in the radius of gyr gyration but with unfolding the radius of gyration increases. So this is one interesting aspect of protein and surfactant interaction in a solution and its study using uh, small angle neutron scattering. So small angle neutron scattering, I have used examples from organic chemistry, I have used example from biology. So it can really integrate studies in this whole range when you are okay with the length scale that you can study. This is 70 angstrom, 70 with 70 angstrom, 70 angstrom, you can see these are 70 to 80 to 90 angstrom 
इसका साइज सेमी मेजर एक्सिस सेमी माइनर एक्सिस अराउंड ट्वेंटी आई स्ट्रॉन्ग एंड अनफोल्डिंग अनफोल्डेड स्ट्रक्चर दिस इज फोल्डेड स्ट्रक्चर वेन इट इज फोल्डेड देन वट इज द रेडियस एंड वेन इट इज अनफोल्डिंग यू गेट अ रेडियस ऑफ जनरेशन दैट मीन्स द माइसेलर अरेंजमेंट इज बिकमिंग लार्जर दैट्स वट दिस पार्ट इंडिकेट्स that the radius of gyration for the micelle is increasing when you unfold the protein structure and unfolding depends on the strength of the sds surfactant so up to 20 millimolar concentration the structure remains folded the protein remains folded and beyond that the protein starts unfolding from this point onwards and we have found out the radius of gyration of the micelles in this unfolded protein structure and we have done the experiments with with 1 weight percent of bsa protein which is bromine serum albumin and with the hydrogenated and deuterated sds micelle this is also a struck work done on the slit and velocity selector based small angle neutron scattering machine in dhruva and this is uh and a statement of the bead necklace structure protein and the surfactant and their fractal dimensions now this sds micelles as they go to higher and higher concentration as the chain becomes more and more linear you can see the fractal dimension actually the fractal dimension should have been 3 if it is a three dimensional structure three dimensional but it is never so because you can see the starting from 20 millimolar the fractal dimension is 2.27 so this structure it as it becomes more and more linear you can see the fractal dimension goes towards 1 but it is not 1 it is 1.71 so fractal dimension is 2.27 it is just i from three dimensional structure to it goes to a linear value and of course the micelle radius remains almost fixed for the these are the radii this is the radii of micelle radii which are sitting in pockets in the unfolded chain but the unfolding is like the coastline of india that i discussed to you discussed with you so this protein can be unfolding like this like this and then from there it might go to more and more linear chains and when it goes to more and more linear values then you can the fractal dimension because now the how the surfactants attach to the background protein structure dictates how the fractal dimension will be coming out and also the number of micelles and the aggregation number that you can see so here i complete my discussion on what we did on surfactants to protein unfolding now question is that we can expand the length scale using msans which is medium resolution sans msans is medium resolution sans that is m sans and we can also add up sans with small angle x ray scattering or sacks machine this is the very interesting observation that you can have data from sans you can also have data from sacks if your sample allows not that all the samples will allow you to get small angle x ray scattering data for example the examples that are used so far are deuterated or hydrogenated samples and they cannot use cannot be used for small angle x ray scattering so i'll be using some examples where m sans and small angle x ray scattering can be added and we can get data over larger q range in the next module or next part of the talk